What's going on everyone? I'm not gonna bore you with a super long intro. Uh, this is your 2023 dispensary marketing plan on how you can double your sales this year. What we're gonna cover is we're gonna cover the three fundamentals of marketing success. Following that, we're gonna go through the cannabis sales equation to show you how you can get a significant boost in sales. Following that, we're gonna show you how you can optimize your website for a conversion in 2023 and beyond. And then once we put all of that together, we're gonna to develop a custom action plan based on where you are now and then what you need to do in order to double your sales this year. Now, the only thing that I ask um, is for your attention. So if you can turn off your cell phones, unless you're watching this on your cell phone, then don't turn it off. Um, and if you're a dispensary owner and you're looking to get serious uh, and better results in 2023, I truly think the next 60 to 90 minutes will change your life. Now. If you stay until the end, uh, I have this super nice, well-formatted <laughs> checklist to provide you guys. It goes through everything that I speak about in this call and a lot more, and wink, wink, there's a special guide um, in there as well. So if you stay, stay till the end, I'll share the link with you guys. Um, so then feel free to take a look at that checklist because uh, I know it's a really awesome resource as well. Now to quickly go through who I am, my name's Brandon. In 2018, I started my own small business. And for those of you who that are wondering, it was a local table tennis club. And like with many other businesses just getting started, I had to answer this question. How do I get more clients through the doors or customers with pretty much zero budget or minimal budget? My first thought was that I had to use social media to get my first clients, but after hundreds, and I'm talking hundreds of posts, um, and only some likes on my posts to show for, I was getting really, really hopeless. And then I truly came to a huge realization. Whenever somebody searches for something, they Google it. Boom, light bulb went off in my head. Uh, I knew I had to get my website to the top of Google because that would be my key to never having to rely on social media posts again. After a few seconds of excitement, uh, you know, I then came back down to the earth and realized that there's absolutely no way I can afford an SEO agency that charges thousands of dollars per month. I also realized that I don't even know where to begin with SEO. And this is back in 2018, um, truly, truly be the beginnings of me learning and becoming an expert to where I am right now, right? Such an overwhelming subject that I didn't know where to start, but I need to make it work. So I buckled down, learned everything that I could, and then fast forward to a year later, I ended up tripling our membership. So you can see here uh, that in this picture, first starting out, uh, I only had two friends that came to the club. One year later, uh, we increased our membership to about, I think this is like 10 people here. And then we actually tripled our member using organic search marketing. Um, and the club is still running to this day. You can Google it, Durham Table Tennis. Um, and uh, you know we have a, a bunch of awesome members and this is purely organic. I don't run any paid ads. I don't do anything like that. This is all with the power of Google. Now, what I needed to do then is that I needed to transition my uh, existing marketing skills into working with cannabis dispensaries. So, so far we've worked with tons of amazing clients, both in Canada and the United States. We've generated millions of dollars of revenue for our clients um, and some pretty amazing results. So you can see here uh, for this dispensary, we increased calls to this dispensary by 302%. They jumped from about 700 calls to about 3,000 calls right here. Their aggregate website data is 33,000 website visits, 14,000 direction requests, and 8,500 calls. For this dispensary, we immediately generated them $40,000 of additional revenue per month just by helping them rank higher on Google. Now, you must be wondering to yourself, well, you know, how do I do this for myself? Don't worry, I'm gonna get right into it. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it for my clients so then you can do it for yourself. Now, here's the main problem for the overall structure of trying to generate sales for your dispensary, right? As you've probably seen, and it's not slowing down anytime soon, is that there are just so many options and it's just very difficult for you to figure out where do I spend my budget? Do I spend it on social media? Do I spend it on like bus shelters? Do I spend it on more online advertising, more offline advertising? There's just so many things going on, right? You have SEO, you have PPC, you have websites, you have social media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these take a major investment in marketing, right? And a lot of times my clients or the people that came to me before they were clients, they spent thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, even hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they really didn't have anything to show for it because you kind of go through what's called the shotgun bullet, uh, the shotgun approach to marketing, right? It's like, I have a budget, I'm gonna spend this budget, I'm gonna hope and pray because I really don't know what's going on. So hopefully this video will provide some clarity on what you need to do in order to move forward, again, to help double your sales. Other things that my clients came to me before with, you know, uh, they, a lot of times their customers say, oh, I didn't even know you guys existed and you've been open for months, right? Um, 
you know, uh, getting zero online orders, spending way too much money on weed maps. I think the cost uh, for weed maps has almost 4x over the past couple of years. It's, it's crazy. Um, and then not only that, uh, back in the day, you used to be able to get away with just having your store. And because you're the only store in the area, you used to bring in, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, if not millions, right? Um, but with the increasing competition, you also need to increase your skill set being able to market your company, right? You can't just think that, oh, because I was super successful back then that, uh, oh, things are just going to be that way forever. No, as competition increases, your skill set needs to increase uh, in the value that you're going to provide to your customers or else you're going to lose out on all those sales, right? Now, the bad thing, all that stuff, or a good thing is that all this bad stuff is uh, you know behind you now. I'm going to walk you through all the different things uh, that you should do in order to help your dispensary grow. Now, here's the opportunity, right? What we're going to do is we're going to set a clear plan with specific marketing strategies that will have a great return on your investment. Let's keep it super simple, right? You want to have a strategy where you can put money in and get more money out. That's all this is, right? I'm not going to overcomplicate things with saying a bunch of jargon. All you want to do is have a plan, put some money in, get more money out. That's, that's all it is. Now, first step is setting up your plan. Now, what I did is to simplify this whole equation in the world of complexities and the different things that you need to do. There's only three things that you need to focus on. You need to focus on awareness, you need to focus on conversion, and you need to focus on loyalty, right? And this equation really breaks it down because um, what you need to do is that if you don't have anybody aware of your business, but you convert all of them, it doesn't matter. This equation is still zero, but you have loyal customers, you're still going to get some sales, right? On the flip side, if you have a million people who know you exist, but your conversion is zero, then your loyalty um, customers will keep you afloat, right? But because you're not converting into any customers, you're not getting any sales, right? So this framework is that awareness is one, getting people to know that you exist. Two is then converting people who know you exist into paying customers. And then three, it's getting those customers to keep coming back and also providing word of mouth growth, right? So this acts as a positive feedback loop, right? Because the more people you're, uh, that know that you exist, the more you can convert them into paying customers, the more that you can convert them into paying customers, the more that you can convert them into loyal customers, right? And then the more that you convert them into loyal customers, the more sales that you're gonna get, and that's where the dispensary growth is really gonna happen. So really and truly, if you're stuck at any point in time on how to generate sales, you either need to generate more awareness, need to convert the customers better, and need to drive more loyalty towards your business, right? Make sense? Good? Awesome. <laughs> so now, Awareness, getting people to know you exist. How exactly do you do that? So how do people find your business right now, right? Do you have an if you build it, they will come mentality? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. This is not good enough at all. Uh, was business good and now with the competition, not so good? Um, a lot of times, like I said, and I alluded to this earlier, is that like a lot of times you have your dispensary, it's up, you're in a good location, there's no competition, you're good to go, right? But as more competition comes about, you need to find unique ways uh, that people will come in and find your business because this is how most dispensaries operate. You have your potential customers, something happens in the middle, and then you get sales, right? Uh, whether it's fluctuations in season, fluctuations in uh, customer uh, behavior and customer demographics. Um, again, whether it's competition coming up, there's so many different things that happen and that like this hope needs to be clarified in order for you to figure out how you get more people coming in, right? And here are the main forms of, aware of awareness strategy, right? So I'm just gonna touch on the digital awareness campaigns um, and there's typically five, right? You have your social media, like posting on Instagram, posting on Facebook, posting on TikTok now. Uh, you have your Google ads, your Facebook ads, so these are paid media strategies. Then you have SEO, and I alluded to this earlier, the search engine optimization ranking on Google. And you have five programmatic ads. Now, to break that down, um, the top three, I typically don't even recommend you really even touch or put serious effort into. Um, one, because you're probably not allowed to do it, or there's a lot of upkeep, right? So on Google ads and on Facebook ads, this is what Google says, recreational drugs is not allowed. Now. There are some rumblings, you know, through the grapevine where it's saying like CBD is not is, is now allowed, you know, all these different things. And I think this is a step in the right direction, but I think it's going to still take a few more years for us to be able to fully advertise cannabis on Google. Now, are there loopholes? Yes. Is it worth uh, the time and effort to, to do it? Maybe. In my opinion, it's not because with these two other strategies, uh, I really and truly think that this is all you need. Um, along with some of the other marketing strategies following conversion and loyalty that'll help you get the sales that you want. Now, 
this program ads part programmatic ads part is again more of the advanced side of things i will probably make a video separately touching on programmatic ads um but for the most part seo is the way you want to go now why so google is where everyone's going to find you right we can see the search volume here the monthly search volume is almost 3 million right for dispensaries near me and the search volume here for just dispensaries 1.5 million so that's a lot of people right a lot of people are searching just like when you you're hungry you type in restaurant near me you go to find somewhere to eat the exact same thing applies somebody wants their cannabis fix they're going to google dispensary near me then they're going to go into the dispensary sounds simple right here's the problem 75 percent of people will never scroll past the first page on google this is why you need to rank number one and to break that down a little bit further uh, these are the ctrs per ranking on average and ctr means click-through rate it means that Based on where you rank, how many people are actually clicking on that listing? So if you have 2,000 potential customers per month on Google, here's some quick stats. So if you're first place and your conversion is 28.5%, you have 570 potential customers, which will equal $25,000 in potential sales. Now, if you're 10th place, you only have 50 potential customers, which is only 2250 in sales. That's a 10x difference from first place, right? So you can see here, it's not like a linear growth where this gets 10, this gets nine, this gets eight, this gets seven. No, this gets 10 times the amount of results from you ranking in 10th place, right? So it definitely pays to be first. Now, why are the numbers like that, right? So ideally you wanna rank on Google Maps where you type in dispensary near me, and then you also wanna rank in the organic section, the section that is right below the Google Maps section. Cause this gives you the double marketing power, right? More people know, like, and trust your brand because you're showing up on Google. There's just that inherent authority from you ranking there. Um, and by doing this, you're going to be able to see those gains and even more because you're ranking on top, right? So how does this funnel look like? Kind of customers want your cannabis product. They're going to Google the cannabis slash dispensary related keyword. They're going to go to your website, get direction, call directly, and then make a purchase online. Another great thing about Google is that there's high buying intent. And what I mean by that is, let's say you compare it to social media, where you see some post online, you're probably just gonna double tap and like it, right? Great, that's fine. But you wanna ensure that the people who are aware of your business also convert into paying customers, right? Where that's where the high conversion comes into play. Now on Google, similarly to when you type in restaurant near me, you're doing that because you're hungry. You're doing that because you want something to eat. So uh, you don't just do it for fun. So same thing when people type in dispensary near me or cannabis or weed or marijuana or whatever it is, uh, there's high buying intent. So the customers that want cannabis products that find you online, there's a higher percentage chance that they're gonna come in and purchase from your business. Now, if you decide to work with us, 93% of our clients reach the first page of Google within the first four months, right? Some really awesome results. We have some really unique strategies that help our clients rank, um, but if you want more case studies, just go to cannabudmarketing.com backslash case studies. Um, if you want to learn more about this, just subscribe to our YouTube channel and then, you know, you'll be able to learn all of this yourself. Now, conversion. Conversion is converting people who know you exist into paying customers. So Google's great because people have a higher likelihood chance of purchasing. But what if we increase that even further, right? We want to make sure that your website is set up to convert visitors into customers. Because you don't just want visitors to your site, you wanna ensure that you have the highest percentage probability of people coming in and purchasing from your business. So to break that down into does conversion optimization really have an impact, a 15% difference in conversion can result in a $150,000 difference in revenue, which is insane. So this is just in the online space. This, is, this isn't counting any other funnel. This is the online shopping funnel. So if your website sessions are 4,000, right? You have your website sessions, then you have your shop page visit. So people who go to your website, visit the shop page. People who visit the shop page, visit the cart page. People who visit the cart page, visit checkout. People who visit checkout, visit purchases, right? Or ultimately make a purchase, right? In an ideal world, all 4,000 people who uh, visit your website also make a purchase, but we know that's not the case. People are gonna leave, you know, uh, website loading times are gonna be super slow. Whatever it is, for whatever reason, they're not gonna make a purchase. So at each step down what's called the funnel, right? you're gonna have a decreasing number of people who take it to the next step. So all I did was adjust the conversion by 15%, but you can see here that the difference in annual revenue is almost $150,000. And this isn't with complex marketing strategies or anything like that. It's literally, what can we do on your website right now to help improve the percentage chance that people are gonna come in and make a purchase? Now, what are the different things that you can do? 
here are some of the lowest hanging fruit of the thing, different things you could do on your website to uh, set it up for maximum conversion. So first things first is does it speak to your customer and what is the key differentiator for your business, right? So uh, different locations, different areas, whether you're in Canada, you're in America, whether you're in different states and different provinces, uh, provinces right? You're going to have different customer demographics that come into your store. Right? So different things that you do in one store is going to resonate differently than what you do in another store. Maybe you're in an affluent area, so they want more luxurious feel to the things that they're buying. Right? Maybe you're in a slightly lower financially demographic area, so you need to speak to sales and budgets and discounts and stuff like that. You need to make sure that your dispensary speaks to your customer and then your key differentiator as well. The biggest key differentiator that I hear from pretty much all dispensary owners is that you know the look and feel of their dispensary is awesome, their customer service is amazing, all these different things. But when I look at their website, I see nothing about their store. I, I have no idea about their customer service. I know I know nothing, right? But if it's truly the key differentiator for your business, why don't you plaster it everywhere? Because that's the thing that's truly going to resonate with your customers. Then there's like simpler things like making sure your phone number is hyperlinked on your website. You know when you go on your phone and then you see a phone number and you can't click it, but you have to copy and paste it into the dialer and then ring it? What conversion is or what optimizing for conversion is in the, for the most part is how do you reduce the friction for your customers to get what they want, right? In an ideal world, it's just getting them to purchase right away, but sometimes they want to call you. Sometimes they want to um, message you via email. Sometimes they want to just find your hours. Sometimes they want to find, you know, whatever it is, where you're located. So you need to make sure that all of these different things you have and you're reducing the friction it takes for your customers to get what they want. The same thing applies for getting your email hyperlinked, having social proof and testimonials, right? I, as a customer, want to ensure that the purchase that I'm going to make is going to be a good purchase. So I need to see that you are a trustworthy business. Right. How do you do that? You have social proof, proof and testimonials. Right. A lot of people put their testimonials like hidden in like an about section on the page. I'm never going to click on the about section on your website, um, but I am going to scroll down on the home page of your website to see. Right. You want to reduce the friction. For, to, you want to reduce the friction takes for your customers to get what they want. And I want to know that you're a trustworthy business. So I want to see your social proof and testimonials without me having to scroll everywhere. Right. Do you have a live chat option? Um, I immediately installed a live chat option on a client's website. They got 120 additional conversations with customers that they wouldn't have had otherwise because they had the live chat option on their website. Putting this on your website will automatically help you improve conversions on your website free of charge. Uh, there's a uh, software called Talk, T-A-W-K dot T-O, I think. Install that on your website. You're going to talk to more customers, um, and it's a good thing. Uh, another thing, are there calls to action on each page to speak to your customer avatar and tell them exactly what to do next? So um, it's weird that if you don't tell a customer to do a specific thing on your website, on a conversion standpoint, on a percentage basis, they are not going to take that action. So what you want to do is you want to set up a verb that says shop here, buy now, order online, right? That tells your customers to do exactly what they should do. Because if you just say menu or... Um, uh, yeah, if you just say menu or something like that, right, and you don't say view menu, you will actually have a lower percentage conversion of people clicking on the view menu. And you want as many people taking it to the next step as possible. So shop here instead of just mm, menu is the only thing popping up in my head, but you get the point, right? Um, you want to go ahead and have a verb, an action that tells your customers to do something um, on your website. And then are you leveraging marketing automation SMS to maximize your conversion rates, right? So this also falls into loyalty. Um, but in terms of conversion, like if, if you have a, uh, a sign up on your website, do you have automations that uh, automatically puts them into different categories? If your customer likes flour, if your customer likes edibles, and then you can send them automations and stuff like that. There's a lot of cool things on the back end. Again, I would say this is more advanced, but this is, these are different things that you need to think about as you're going. Like never think in your business like, oh, things are going well, this is all I need to do. It's like, no, what things can I continually stack in my dispensary without reducing the quality of the stuff that I'm already doing so that I can continue to get better and better and better, right? Because if you're in it for the long term, as you continue to get better, you continue to build this moat around your business, right? And as you build this moat, the more powerful your business becomes because you're building out these assets and these different things that you do better than the competition, right? Now, uh, going back to this point, what is a key differentiator? Does it speak to your customer? Uh, uh, most, if not all, of dispensary owners never do surveys of their customers, and I would highly recommend you do some surveys. Now, 
what's another best thing that you can do if you don't want to do a survey? Just look at your Google reviews. When people write Google reviews, they're emotionally polarized, right? They're super, super happy or they're super, super pissed off, right? This is good. Not if they're pissed off, but in general, this is good because you see why people are super happy about your business, right? You can see here uh, for this review, the staff was really helpful and friendly, got a birthday discount, which was an awesome surprise and really made my day. They are decently priced and have a great selection. I highly recommend. I'm gonna touch on the loyalty section um, in a second, but you can see here, the staff was really helpful and friendly. That's one, really likes the staff. Got a birthday discount. This customer loves a birthday discount so much that they wrote a review. Like think about how many Google reviews you've written, right? Um, if people go out of their way to write a Google review, you've done something really, really well, right? Um, highly recommend this place. First time visiting the dispensary, had an awesome time. Ramon and Chanel helped me. You have an excellent staff that went above and beyond the call of duty to help me understand my options, right? They're very helpful with the disabled community, right? These are golden nuggets of opportunity on how you can showcase why your dispensary is better than the competition. Go look at your Google reviews. Go see why people like you and why people dislike you. Do more of what people like, do less of what they dislike, right? And I promise you, if you do this every single day, every single week, every single month, these small incremental improvements are gonna exponentially grow your business because you are doing things more for your customer. And like I said, a lot of times dispensary owners tell me like, uh, we give the best customer service. We do, like, what does that mean? And are you doing it in a way that actually resonates with your customers, right? Um, I'll give you a really good example. We had one dispensary owner actually change the music in their store because uh, the demographic of people who showed up in the middle of the day uh, was different because there were an older crowd. There were, let's say, the retired crowd or could afford just not to go to work in the middle of the day. And then the ones later at night were the younger crowd. So the music actually changed to resonate better with their customer. And these small things are really what's going to make the difference on how you can differentiate yourself from your competition and absolutely crush it, right? Now, loyalty, getting your customers to keep coming back. This is super, super important because, you know, you know I like my calculations, but numbers speak, right? So if we were going to take a look at the average lifetime value of a Starbucks customer, it's actually $14,000. That is a lot of coffee. Now, you're not selling $8 or two, three, four, whatever the price of the coffee is for less than $10. You are selling cannabis products, which range from $45 to $100. If you're lucky, you'll get a couple $200 purchases, right? Now, this is a very simple calculator to show you how much potential is there if you look at customers as a lifetime value. So we're going to take an average purchase value of $45 and then purchases per year 24. So each customer on average will purchase two times a month only, right? I know you have customers that come in once a month and you probably have customers that come in once every week um, or once uh, uh, every couple days, right? So uh, your average lifetime value for a customer in one year is going to be uh, 1,080, right? This should be 24, so <laughs> 1,080, right? If you bring in an additional 50 customers, we're gonna multiply this by 50, um, that's $54,000 or almost $650,000 for the entire year. So this is why loyalty is super, super important because it's so much easier to make a customer come back than it is to get new customers. It is infinitely hard to, infinitely more hard to get customers from another dispensary and get them loyal to yours than to keep your existing customers loyal. You wanna make sure that you're treating your customers very well because you don't need a lot of new customers a month in order to hit some, some good numbers, some decent numbers, right? So how do we increase loyalty? That is the next question. Now, here's a loyalty strategy. There are four things, baseline, right, that you need to have in place before you do any other fancy stuff. The first thing is product. You need to have a good product. If your products are crappy, it goes without saying people aren't gonna come back. Two, it's the customer service. As you saw with a lot of those Google reviews, a lot of people said, hey, I love the customer service and the staff, they were awesome. Trick, you need to figure out what about your customer service people like, right? In general, smiles, happy, super friendly, all that fun stuff but exactly what do people like about the customer service, right? Um, if I was this dispensary owner, I would specifically ask Ramon and Chanel, what do they do for their customers? And then use this as a baseline training on how you can go ahead and instill this sort of customer service for the rest of the staff, right? Three, pricing aligned with provided value. Now, pricing needs to be good. I didn't say it needs to be cheap. I didn't say it needs to be low. In general, sometimes that helps, right? But you need to make sure the pricing is aligned with the value that you provide, 
right? You can't just go ahead and charge $200 for whatever this one pre-roll, unless it's like really, really crazy, right? So you need to make sure your pricing is aligned with provided value. And I would say also aligned with the customer demographics that you're serving, right? The four is then buying experience. Now, customer service and buying experience is the same, but I thought customer service was so big that it needed to stay by its own. And buying experience are different things, such as like minimal waiting times. Do you have a good store layout? Is it easy to purchase online? Is it easy to purchase in the store, right? Uh, you know, do the kiosks provide a lot of value? Um, do you have the uh, inventory that people are looking for, right? Th this all goes into the buying experience. Like, do you have parking? Like all of these different things play into part um, as the buying experience, right? Uh, do you have delivery? Do you do curbside pickup, right? Before you do anything else with loyalty, you need to make sure you have these four things in place, right? If you don't have these four things optimized, like you're playing a losing game, you need to make sure you have these four things in place. Now, in terms of additional strategies, right? Once your foundation is set, like I said, once your foundation is set with these four things, uh, we can look into digital loyalty strategies. And it typically falls under three things. You have SMS, you have email, and then you have loyalty reward programs. Now, looking at this case study from Spring Big, I think it is, you'll see here that, I won't go into the numbers too crazy, but members with more than one redemption they make up 74.6% of spend in month 12. So if you can get a customer to stay with you for 12 months, they're typically customers that have, you know, uh, invested into getting points for loyalty. Non-members, they only make up 5.8%, right? But you can see here that at the beginning, right, you have more people um, that have not done loyalty um, that have paid, right? and then members with no redemptions, but they still signed up for the loyalty program, 9.3%. But this brings me back to that whole dispensary sales equation to where that it acts as a positive feedback loop. You're gonna have non-members that are non-loyalty, which is fine, but you wanna get them loyal customers so they keep coming back and purchasing because a customer that comes in and stays for 12 months is more valuable than a customer that only stays on for one month, right? So you need to make sure that that customer keeps on coming back. Super, super important stuff. Now, SMS and email, the two types of, uh, I guess, outreach strategies or retention strategies. Email, the average open rate sits to about 28 and 33%. If you provide high value email, that can hit about 50% um, uh, because you're continually putting out good stuff. You're not just saying, hey, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. You're, you're getting, giving out good value or at least good discounts that people are going to want to read, right? SMS, the average open rate sits at about 99% with 97% of messages being read in 15 minutes of delivery. Now it's clear that SMS has the more open rates, but what happens is that it's a more personal touch, right? And sure, it, you know, receiving one from a brand feels similar to receiving one from a friend or family member, only if you provide the value of a good SMS outreach strategy. Like how many times do you get an, email, uh, an SMS that says, hey, uh, opt in for this thing, get 15% discount, blah, 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 blah. And then you get another one the next day and another one the next day and another one the next day. The volume of email, more people are receptive to receiving discounts in emails, right, from email, than from SMS. I tell you, if you bombard my phone with text messages every single day about some sort of discount, I'm immediately gonna block you and opt out, right? Sometimes even report you if you do some bad stuff. But for the most part, email is more um, friendly. I don't know if friendly is a word, but people are more receptive to getting marketing emails about email than SMS. You need to ensure that you do SMS properly. Because once you mess up, there is no going back. Nobody's gonna sign up for your SMS once they've opted out. You need to make sure you do this properly, right? Don't just bombard people. Don't let this number of 97 and 99% fool you. Just because people read your messages doesn't mean that they're gonna turn into paying customers. Super, super, super important, right? Now, so far, we've set up your sales framework. We know how to feed your positive feedback loop. Uh, we made sure your customers are being found on your website by, um, by the customers. Uh, we also optimize your website for conversion. And then we also establish loyalty with our customers, right? So I've gone through all of this stuff. Now let's build your plan. Bringing it back to the dispensary sales equation or the cannabis sales equation. We have awareness. You're very familiar with this. We're going to use Google, use SEO, right? Conversion. We're going to make sure the website converts very, very well to convert them into paying customers. And then we have loyalty, right? We know loyalty. We're going to keep the customers coming back. And this is how you truly focus on your sales. Marketing in general, not just for dispensaries, 
it's not this complicated thing. You just need to make sure the things that you're doing, you're doing at the highest level, right? Just like, uh, you know, those, those, those classic food places where you see that they don't do any marketing, but their food is really, 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 really good. It's because they focus on the food, right? Um, you can get outsized returns doing small things very, very well than doing a million different things subpar, right? Feeding back into the acquisition framework, like I said, you're going to have awareness, you're going to have conversion, convert them into loyal customers, you're going to get more sales. This is all you need to focus on. This is it. This is it. There's, there's, there's a million things, but figure out what your weak points are in any of these three things and improve upon it, right? If you know that you're crushing it and you're ranking number one on Google and you're doing all these good things, um, try and look at your website. See if you can convert better people, right? If you don't have a lot of people coming back and your loyalty sucks, focus on that, right? If you have all of these things tied into place, then you can focus on more advanced stuff like programmatic ads. Maybe you want to leverage Google ads and you want to be, you know, uh, not so uh, uh, compliant on the rules and stuff like that, right? Those are things you can focus on after the fact. But if you don't have these foundational things in place, then it's like trying to run without knowing how to walk and you only know how to crawl right? Very important stuff. So awareness, Google, conversion, website, loyalty on the phone, SMS, email, and in store, you're going to get sales. This is the dispensary growth. Now, just so you know, I'm not just talking on my ass, right? I just have a bunch of case studies and stuff. So we have tons of happy dispensary owners, um, so much so uh, that they were open and willing and happy enough to uh, do a video for us, right? Uh, we've got tons of amazing results. I touched on this before. Uh, we got some uh, 302 percent increased calls for this dispensary um, generated forty thousand dollars additional revenue per month um, like i said if you go to cannabismarketing.com backslash case studies we have tons of case studies we have even more videos uh, we have even more doubling of traffic we have all of these things for you to go take a look at um, our clients typically see a 34 percent increase in traffic after four months and an 88 percent increase in traffic after 12 months we handle everything you don't have to lift a finger Maybe a pinky finger because we need a little bit of assistance from your end, but we handle like 99.999% of the workload. Uh, you just need to sit back and let us handle the rest. Now, as promised, uh, if you want to get your checklist that goes through all of the things that I spoke about here and then an additional marketing plan, wink, wink, super nice marketing plan in the back, um, feel free to go ahead and check out cannabudmarketing.com backslash checklist. To quickly summarize everything, We've set up the customer acquisition framework. We know how to feed our positive feedback loop. We made sure our customer websites being found by our customers. We've optimized our website for conversion, and then we've established loyalty with our customers. Now, if this was a lot and you don't want to go ahead and do it yourself and you want to help us or you want us to help you double your dispensary sales, uh, there is a link in the description or go to cannabudmarketing.com backslash schedule um, where you can schedule your free uh, strategy session where I'm just going to go through your entire website uh, go through this exact same equation, right? And how this equation would apply for you and where we would apply these different strategies to help uh, with your sales for your business. So hope you gain tons and tons of value out of this equation and you're ready to crush the new year. Or if you're watching this in the middle of the year, crush the rest of the year. Um, best of luck with everything. And again, if you ever need to get in contact with me, you can visit the website, cannabudmarketing.com backslash schedule. That's it for now. Bye.